keep on picking. We need a lot of them. These kids are picking violets for their grandmother, who uses the flowers for a food entry at the Iowa State Fair. At home, the flowers are rinsed, put in a jar, and covered with boiling distilled water. And we use distilled water to pour over the violets to steep them because otherwise it would be cloudy, I think. The recipe says distilled water. We'll put the lid on and we'll let it stand at room temperature, 15 to 24 hours. The next day, Louise Piper will turn this jar of blossoms into violet jelly with the recipe she used to win a 2009 blue ribbon at the state fair. I've been making jellies and jams for about 48 years. I just love to do it. My mother did a lot of food preservation and I like to use it for my family and I like to use it for gifts and I just love to do it. So then I thought I'd like to enter it in the fair to see if the judges liked what I was doing. <laughs> Between jams, jellies, butters, conserves, and probably four relishes. I had 36 total canned items. Piper has stockpiles of handwritten recipes stained from repeated use, and many with scribbles on them, noting if they were winning recipes. On this day in April, she worked on two projects, one with violets and one with rhubarb. You pick the rhubarb and wash it and cut it up and then you grind the raw rhubarb. I have a little electric grinder here, and that's what I use. Then you let that run through a cloth so that it's clear. And I did this last evening, and I need three and a half cups of this rhubarb juice. In this large, heavy kettle, I have measured seven cups of the cane sugar. Then you turn the burner on to high, and you stir. And this has to come to a full rolling boil. When you're making jelly, you want to have everything ready. And when it comes to a full rolling boil, then I will put the surto in. The is? A liquid pectin. Once the liquid pectin is added, she stirs one minute, then skims off the foam. We scrape the, we scoop the foam off the jelly. Now, I tell my grandkids, this is just like cotton candy. It's not that you can't eat this, but it's just that you want to skim the foam off the jelly so that your jelly is clear and will have a much better appearance, like jewels in a jar. Piper says the devil is in the details when it comes to competing at the fair and knowing what the judges are looking for. But it took me a while to learn, you know, that they wanted uh, the amount of head space, that a jar, a ball jar has to have a ball flat on top, a cur jar has to have a cur flat, there has to be one fourth inch head space, all of these things you learn as you go along. When I'm doing this, I have my phone right by me, and if the phone rings, I'll answer it and say, I'm ladling up jelly or I'm ladling up jam, can I call you back? Because you want to keep at it. It is tedious work, but work she loves. And she encourages others to learn this art of making jellies and jams. Get information from the extension office. Uh, read the cookbooks, read the information, or go do it with somebody. Many of us that do it would be very willing to have you come and watch or do it with us. And then you'll get there. You might have some failures, but. It's worth pursuing, I think it's worth pursuing. For Louise Piper, the fun is in making something others enjoy. And the fruit of her labor has also been recognized by judges at both the Iowa State Fair and her local county fair. I always like to say this is my tournament. Some people go to bowling tournaments, bridge tournaments, golf tournaments. This is my tournament. Do you know at this point if that's state fair competitive? I hope so. I hope so. I won't know till it's all processed and sealed.